Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, session here uh, this morning. We are recording this session and we are on Facebook Live as well. So give me just a quick second and I will get the slides set up. Okay, and we should be able to see. Morning, morning, everyone. Let me just adjust a couple things here on the screen. Okay, and we should be ready to go. Okay. So welcome to our session here uh, this morning. Uh, we are on session one of three, and today's topic is uh, purpose-driven selling. Are you an average, uh, um, or are you a sales superstar, or are you just an average salesperson? And you know, today, you know, uh, now more than ever, we need to have better selling skills. Okay, so. We're going to run through in the next uh, about 45 to 50, 50 minutes. What can you do to transform into a sales superstar uh, status? Okay. Um, the information that we share, that I share with you on all of our sessions, um, first of all, I do respect your time and effort in being here uh, with us or, or watching this. Um, and I will not waste your time. I promise to share relevant valuable information on this session and uh, just to let you know we are recording this session it is also on Facebook live uh, if you're not connected with me on Facebook please go ahead and send me a connection or you know like the page wherever you're watching this uh, so that you can watch the uh, you know this this session over and over again now the the uh, trainings and the sessions that we do uh, it's not a pitch fest. There's no hard selling and there's no getting you to buy anything at an unreasonable or inflated price. Now, I may offer some services or products and explain them, but no hard selling. And I think this sounds fair. Uh, you know, I think this sounds fair, right? So <clears throat> if you if uh, you have any questions along the way, um, you can type your question in the chat or write them down and you can ask me at the end of our session during the Q&A. All right. So, you know, we, we, we're in this current situation for, for quite a while, uh, you know, rather challenging. Um, you know, this year and maybe for the foreseeable future, uh, you know, we're seeing some things getting better, some things getting worse. Uh, we all have extra challenges, right? And so whatever your product or service is, it affects the economy because people are hesitant to spend money, right? Then you add in the restrictions, the lockdowns, uh, you know, the challenges in, in meeting up in person. Uh, so we try to meet up online. We try to get, you know, prospects online. We try to have conversations, not, you know, not face to face. And when we combine all of this, we have uncertainty. And here's, here's what I believe. Uh, I believe the pandemic is not what's breaking us. All right. Nor is it causing all of our problems. We all know, or at least I know, a lot of uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of professionals that are absolutely killing it, right? And you know, secretly they don't want you know, uh, you know, some of these restrictions to end because um, they they were able to adapt. And what I need to help you to do is I need you to adapt as well. All right, but it's showing us what we what we need to fix because it's revealing what was already broken, and we need to fix all of this now. Now a, a brief. Uh, you know, brief intro. Uh, my business and entrepreneurship journey started in 1998. Okay, so in the spare bedroom of my apartment in San Diego, I was cold calling like a madman. Uh, about four months later, uh, I generated enough revenue and I opened up my office and I started hiring. 22, 23 years later, uh, we have a presence in three countries, clients in over 14 countries. And, you know, even today, um, you know, I still cold call for uh, roughly about two, maybe two plus three hours a day, and I generate business also. As you know, 
even during this time. Now, we start here. Whatever your product or service is, you need to make sure of a few things. Your, your product or service must have quality. Uh, you should have a reasonable price and offer exceptional value. And you need to back it up with excellent service. So whatever, whatever we do, okay, uh, we need to make sure of these things. I'm not saying that your product has to be the best in the market or <laughs> you know, the, the, the cheapest price. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. What I'm saying is that it has to have uh, a reasonable level of quality and you must have a reasonable price that offers exceptional value, okay? Now, what is an average uh, salesperson, okay? Uh, or at least what you think an average salesperson is and you know what a sales superstar is, all right? So I want you to think about what what is average and you know what what does uh, an average salesperson look like? What is their income? Uh, what is their effort? Uh, what is their activities? Uh, the second question is what is a sales superstar? All right. In your mind, what does a sales <coughs> sales superstar look like? And here's here's what I think. You know, nowadays average is getting to be acceptable. All right. Uh, if we go a step further, um, I want you to think of some of the things that you do, and I want you to to answer or ask yourself and answer this in your head: Are you average or exceptional? Okay. And you know, this is my opinion. Does anyone know what mediocrity means? Okay. To me, mediocrity means doing something less than your best, and what I'm seeing is that mediocrity is becoming the average. I mean, you, you, you look around you and you'll see what I mean. And, and I want you to, to really take this in. If you're doing less than your best in anything, realize that and make a change. Okay. Now, the average versus the, uh, the sales superstar, um, you know, there, there's a few uh, things that we look at, right? We, we look at the income, we look at the confidence level, uh, we look at the kind of freedom, the type of freedom, the level of freedom that you have, and the kind of quality of uh, life, uh, and what can you provide for your family, all right? So the sales superstar income, of course, is higher, <laughs> and you know confidence level is higher. Uh, you have freedom to move around, you have freedom to make the choice of getting whatever you need to get and you don't if you have the skills of a sales superstar you don't have to be stuck in one place or one industry all right if you have the skills you you're, you're actually very very marketable okay insanity insanity we all know the definition of uh insanity right and i'm very sure we all have goals we all have dreams that we have, right? I, you know, take a second and think about this. What are your goals? What are your dreams? And think about over the last six months, over the last 12 months, over the last 18 months. You have goals. If what you were doing now, if the activities, if the processes, if, if what you were doing now is working, you know, six months ago, maybe you said, okay, uh, this is my goal. Uh, 12 months ago, you said, this is my goal. If what you were doing, you know, all these six months and all these 12 months was working, you would have already reached your goal. And there's two main things that you need in order to be a sales superstar. Okay. The two things are your skill set and your mindset. Now, the skill set is the tools the skills and the techniques that you have, okay? Um, the tools would be, uh, you know, what kind of uh, software do you use? What kind of system do you use? Uh, and then the skills would be, <clears throat> the skills would be, you know, how, how good are you? What's your skill level in prospecting? What's your skill level in qualifying? Uh, what's your skill level in, in, you know, being persuasive? And then the techniques are, you know, how good are those techniques? And, do you actually use them? 
Now, mindset is very interesting. You cannot get away and you cannot separate skill set and mindset. All right? If you think about it, skill set is the tools at your disposal. All right? <clears throat> and mindset is the ability to continue using those tools in the face of rejection, in the face of, I don't feel like doing this today, right? Uh, think about this. If you, let's say you, you were a, uh, uh, a mechanic, all right, <clears throat> and you have to fix that car, and you have all these beautiful tools, the best tools in the world in your toolbox, and the car needs to be fixed, right? So the tools are the skills, right? The tools. And if you're sitting there and you don't feel like getting up and picking up the tools and working on that car, your mindset holds you back. Even though you have the tools there ready for you to use at your disposal, it's ready for you to use to go and fix the car, but you don't get up and do it. And that's the importance of mindset. Now, the components of mindset are these, uh, these four things, okay? Uh, you got to set your goals. You got to know the reason why. You got to know the reason why. You know you're you're doing something, because the goals are you know the destination where you want to end up, the things that you want to achieve, the things that you want to get. How are you going to get there? You must uh, define your goals. You must put a date on it, and you must put your plan into action, and that takes discipline. If you think about it, discipline, we all actually have it, right? The only difference is, are we, are we putting uh, enough of it, all right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Jan, I think you raised your hand. Do you have a question? You can just type that in the chat. Okay. All right. So, uh, we talk about discipline. Discipline is, you know, the extension of discipline is regimentation now discipline you have to set up a schedule of your activities that leads you towards your goals okay for example in 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 the sales and business world uh you know what time do you wake up what are your activities from uh, let's say 9 a.m to 11 uh a.m all right hey, no problem yeah that's okay uh, is it your prospecting? Is it your follow-up? Is it your paperwork? What are the things that you're doing, uh, you know, from certain time periods? Mastery. Mastery is this. Mastery is not perfection. Mastery is practicing your craft and becoming an expert at it. You don't have to be perfect, okay? Mastery is keep on learning and more importantly, implement. All right, learn, practice, and implement. Then mental fortitude. Mental fortitude is, you know, when, in the face of challenges, when you get rejection, you feel like, ah, oh, you know, they rejected me. They didn't say yes to, the, to my deal. You know, there's many things that goes on uh, in the concept of uh, mental fortitude. <clears throat> but if, let's say, you have your reason why, you have your discipline, and you constantly learn, practice, and implement, and you need to realize that, you know, you don't have to win 100% of the time. You, you want to increase that, that percentage as high as possible, but you don't need to win 100% of the time. And one of the ways that will make you feel better when you don't win 100% of the time is that you have lots of leads and you have lots of prospects, okay? If you're hoping for that one deal, okay, that one meeting, that one thing that will make or break your month, you're doing something wrong, all right? You should not have only one deal, okay, or one meeting or one client. You should have a bunch of them. And when you have a bunch of them, those little losses, it doesn't make, it doesn't hurt as much. Now, I want to share this also. Uh, we're starting a series of Facebook Lives uh, next week. Uh, they'll be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And, you know, we cover all these topics, uh, you know, in, in little bite-sized chunks, uh, you know, probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, okay? Uh, we also have uh, two more sessions in this series, and I'll show you and I'll share with you uh, uh, what those are later. Now, the
the components of skill set is you don't you need to define what are the skills that you need and earlier i already mentioned you need to learn you need to learn these skills okay you need to practice okay you need to practice and then you need to take action so many people all right <laughs> you know when 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 i teach them a new skill and i teach them something that's going to that's uh that's going to work for them and i know it's going to work for them because i've seen it work over the last 23 years you know in different countries in different industries okay and then they go oh it's so hard to learn of course it's hard to learn right everything is hard to learn it's it's always hard when you're introduced to something and and you're doing it for the first time and you're learning it for the first time regardless of what that skill is right that's why you got to keep on practicing it and practicing it so that you become familiar with it right and then you got to implement you got to take action and i want to share uh you know a couple sentences with you uh it's a, a, a very strong principle that has guided me uh through you know almost two decades okay so this is the foundation of a superstar the, a sales superstar okay focuses on the activities and not the results focusing on the activities will give you results all right so identify the activities that give you the greatest results and you focus on those activities with constant and consistent action so for most of us the number one activities for most of us that are sales oriented business oriented right the number one activities are prospecting and lead generation most salespeople, most business on uh, business owners they put prospecting and lead generation at the back because it's not enjoyable it's it, you know it, it, it's tedious right but prospecting and lead generation this is your number one priority most of your time and most of your effort should be focused here all right then you gotta you gotta uh, uh, know how to have persuasive uh, conversations you gotta know how to handle objections okay uh you 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 have to have closing skills saying hey do you want to buy uh uh hey what do you think it's not a closing skill and then this is where most deals are lost most deals are lost in the follow-up okay you must have a sales process a sales system think of it like a factory you put the raw materials in and then you have a step-by-step -step, uh, process or a conveyor belt that produces uh, a finished product most of us don't have that most salespeople, regardless of your your industry regardless of your product or service most salespeople don't have that it's like hmm sometimes we prospect sometimes we don't sometimes we run ads sometimes we follow up we don't have a system your first priority is to create a sales system okay prospect every single day run ads every single day i would if, if you say that oh you know what i only have enough budget to run it for <clears throat> for one week okay then make the budget smaller and let it run let your ads run because we need consistency we need the long term okay so some of the activities some of the activities that you need to focus on if you want to become a sales superstar is uh you need to focus on activities that will generate you results that will generate you revenue the number one the number one activity that will generate you income and results is lead generation how do you generate uh uh you know leads and how do you take leads and turn them into prospects okay how do you take those and turn them into appointments into sales conversations and then how do you follow up now um in one of the sessions that i do on the uh on the facebook live on the tuesdays and thursdays i'll actually talk about uh what should you say in your presentation if your if whatever presentation you have um and you're focusing on oh this is my company this is me this is what this is the product this is the service 
Okay, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You got to focus on what are the benefits uh, that your potential uh, client can get, and even more importantly, um, you know the benefits that they get. What we, you know, we call this uh, insight. You should attend. In, in fact, you should you should look uh, um, at uh, our Facebook uh, Facebook page uh, where we where we where we schedule the live sessions. One of those sessions talks about that specifically. Okay, and then follow up. How do you follow up? How often do you follow up? What do you say when you follow up? Uh, what method are you using to follow up? These are the activities that you need to do in order to become a sales superstar. You don't have to be perfect in each and every single part, okay? You just have to have mastery. And mastery means you, you practice it all the time, you practice it every day, and you implement it in your schedule and you take action. Now, there are several areas that you need to upskill in. Um, I mean, we touch on the activities. If those, if the earlier slide was the activities that you needed to do, <laughs> then how well are you going to do them? All right. You need these areas uh, of improvement. Okay. Digital marketing, offline marketing. Some of us think, uh, oh, you know what? I, I post on Facebook. I don't get results. Did you, did you post it the right way? Uh, what did you say when you post it? Hey, this is... Uh, this is my product. If you want it, give me a call. Hey, are you looking for X, Y, Z? Uh, if you're looking looking for that, give me a call. Uh, are you keen on doing this X, Y, Z? You know, all that doesn't, you know, get someone to sit up and pay attention. We live in a world of noise. Okay, we live in a world of competition. Unless you're telling me that you have no competition, and you know, there's a couple. Uh, examples. Okay, we all heard of Nike, right? Uh, we all heard of uh, McDonald's. We all heard of KFC. We all heard of uh, uh, Coca-Cola, right? These are huge companies. Everybody knows them. They have competition, don't they? Right? And because they have competition, and even though they're uh, brand names and everybody knows them, do they still advertise? Do they still run promotions? Do they still do marketing? Okay. If Coca-Cola, <coughs> if Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and Nike has to sell themselves, you need to sell yourself. All right. And then how do you take uh, how do you take uh, digital marketing and offline marketing and combine it together? That's what we call a sales funnel. Right. Then how how do you have your conversations? Are you persuasive? Uh, can you influence? All right. And I'm not saying manipulate. I'm saying there are things that we can say, things that we can do, okay, in order to move uh, uh, the prospect along the sales process to turn them into a customer. And I'm not talking about manipulation. I'm talking about, you know, uh, okay, for example, we talk about objection handling, right? Uh, they say, I'm not interested uh, or the price is too high. What do, we, what do we do? Oh, okay. And then we give up. That's what 80%, 70%, 80% of salespeople do. And that's why they're average. The sales superstar will take that objection and find out why are you giving me this objection? Okay. Uh, in fact, I think one of the sessions we're doing in this series, we talk about uh, objections and how you handle objections. Then we talk about closing skills. How well do you close? Most most business owners, most salespeople, they think that closing happens at the end. Okay, closing happens from the very beginning. It happens from when you generate the lead. You're closing a stranger, okay, that you've never talked to. You're closing them on the idea to have a conversation with you. When you set an appointment, you're closing them on setting the appointment. Okay, and we're not saying hey, set an appointment with me, you're going to buy. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you set the appointment, okay, and you attempt to qualify or disqualify. You qualify them based on their need, their want, their requirement, and are you able to uh, solve their problem, okay? And if you demonstrate that need, 
And if you satisfy that want and that requirement, closing becomes so simple. All right. Then the follow-up techniques. Follow-up is where most deals are lost. Most deals are lost in the follow-up. Think about your business, your product, your service. Okay. <clears throat> 80 plus percent of salespeople don't even reach the third call or the third contact or the fourth contact. Okay. And most sales are made in the, you know, the, the sixth, the seventh, or the eighth interaction, especially if your product is, you know, has a higher decision-making process, if the price point is a little bit higher. So how are you following up? All right. So, you know, with these skills, I want you to, I want you to take the action to learn them. I want you to take the action to uh, uh, practice and implement. Okay. We all have goals. We discussed that earlier, right? We all have goals. Okay. So if you knew that you could accomplish success, if you knew that you could accomplish it, what would your actions be today? If, if let's say you have your goal six months from now and your goal is, uh, you know, X amount of dollars in your bank account or, you know, whatever that goal is, the actions that you're taking today is going to help you get closer to that goal. I want you to think about that every day. When you wake up, all right, what are my actions going to be today, uh, you know, that will get me closer to my goal, okay? Now, then we have physiology versus emotions, okay? Physiology controls our emotions. I want you to think about this. Uh, think about uh, an unsuccessful person. You know, what does that unsuccessful person look like to you? How, how, how is their posture, Okay. They're grooming. How do they take care, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, their cleanliness, their hygiene, their hair, um, you know, ladies, uh, uh, maybe makeup. Okay. How, how uh, uh, do you care how you dress? All right. And then their breathing. Is it like, uh, and then maybe their speech is, you know, a little slow, a little low. And then you can, you can hear the, the lack of success in their voice, okay? So we look at these things, right? We look at the posture. We look at the grooming. We look at the, the breathing, all right? And then maybe their speech is like slow or, or, you know, they're not sure of what they're saying. Now, I want you to flip it, all right? <clears throat> I want you to flip it and I want you to think about what a successful person looks like, okay? A successful person you know, sits up straight, stands up straight, you know, their head. I'm not saying that you got to look like a soldier, okay? And no matter how you're sitting right now and what your posture is, I want you to straighten up. I want you to straighten up, okay? Even, even though a lot of us are working from home, uh, comb your hair, okay? Uh, uh, if let's say, let's say uh, you shave, you know, shave every day, okay? Put on your deodorant, right? Uh, wear... Wear the clothes that you would that you would wear if you were gonna go to work, all right? You know your posture, your grooming, and you know successful people breathe like, you know, with you know with with strength, and their speech, how they talk is not, oh, you know what? I I don't know what I'm gonna do today. You know what? I know I'm gonna do this today from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'm gonna be making calls from 11 a.m. to 11:30. I'm gonna be working on my marketing. You know. Things like that, all right? <clears throat> I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you uh, my, my tactic, my little, my little secret. So it's a Chris secret, right? My tactic is to make everything count, okay? Make everything count, all right? Give yourself no choice but to succeed, okay? Uh, make sure, uh, you know, you get enough time during the day to do the things that you need to do and whether it means waking up earlier uh waking up uh oh, i'm sorry uh going to bed a little bit later give yourself no choice but to succeed okay uh think of it think of it this way because some of us are some of us have our backs against the wall and 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 you know we're 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 down to our last savings right and we need to generate revenue 
all right the time now is no you know the the time is crucial now you got to take action you got to punch forward you got to break out of it all right give yourself no choice but to succeed now you need two things you need two things to succeed in any business in any in any profession in any product and any service you need two things to have success the first thing that you need is you need to have something to sell all right whatever the product whatever the company whatever the service is you need to have something to sell the second thing that you need to be successful is somebody to sell to and be able to sell them well and i believe all of us uh, all of us here we already have something to sell right all we got to do is get our skills up to be able to find somebody to sell to and sell them well and i want you to remember this phrase okay uh, i started my sales career uh, uh 30 years ago all right i went through uh several recessions uh went through 9 11 in the u.s uh, you know, health crisis, not on the scale of today, <coughs> uh, financial, financial, uh, the Asian financial crisis, all this affected, uh, affected me as well. All right. But one of the things that I learned way back in 1994, 1995. Okay. One of the things that I learned was that whatever the economy and never blame the economy, never blame the market situation. Um, uh, let's see, where was I? Ah, okay. So one of the things that I learned um, you know, that really helped me a lot. And I want to share this with you is regardless of the economy, regardless of any situation, okay, buyers are always buying and sellers should always be selling. In any industry, in any product, in any service, okay, in any country, in any culture, there are people still buying those things what you have to do what you have to do is be the one that has that product and put it in front of them have something to sell and have someone to sell it to and sell them well okay now i want to invite you to the other sessions that we're having there's two more i know on the slide it says 12 but there's two more um and if you're on my newsletters um I'll send you the uh, the links uh, and the topics, um, you know, in the uh, in the in the future sessions. We're also restructuring the way that we do these programs, uh, these programs like this. We're going to be focusing more on uh, Facebook Live as well as uh, YouTube. Okay, we will still do sessions like this, and uh, but we are we're going to kind of shift the focus and we're going to be doing them more on uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, in the future. Now we will still invite you to attend. Um, and register for these events and, and be with us on the session, but we will broadcast it uh, in a more open format as well. Okay. <clears throat> and I want to, I want to share this with you. Um, we're in the process of creating a, an online course. It's a special sales mastery and excellence course. It's seven powerful topics. Okay. And you know, the, uh, the topics are, you know, the championship mindset. So, the championship mindset is like how salespeople, how business owners, and how entrepreneurs can stay motivated and be resilient in this changing world, in this changing economy, and the changing of purchasing decisions. Then, very important, professional prospecting. Here, here's what I say about prospecting. Lots of leads solves lots of problems. Okay, The reason we're down... The reason we're not making enough sales is because we don't have enough leads. I never put myself in a situation where I have a low uh, uh, inflow of leads. I work on my marketing. I work on my prospecting every single day. Then uh, in the online course, another module is the sales skills that you need now for success in our time. All right. Uh, and then uh, why is persuasion, uh, why is rapport and convincing power vital for your sales success? We're not talking about manipulation. We're talking about persuasion 
and rapport, all right? When you have insight, when you have benefits and you can identify the problems and the situations that your, your prospects, your, your potential clients are going through and you solve that problem for them, you need to, you need to uh, transmit that information to them and if they can afford it and they'll benefit from it, you must be able to convince them to give you a shot, all right? And then how do we, how do we handle every single objection? I'll share the, the technique and the outline on how to handle uh, every single objection. If you're, always, <clears throat> if you're always getting the same objection, okay, because we all get the same objections, right? Not interested, no time right now, my auntie, my uncle, my cousin, my neighbor, my, my brother does that. Uh, I tried that before, it doesn't work. Not enough money, no budget right now, we don't need it. I need to check with my boss, I need to check with my, my partner, my wife, my husband, right? We get all these same objections, don't we? But every time we get the objection, we answer it a different way. Sometimes we, we, we answer it well. Sometimes we're like, uh, 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 okay, right? If you're always getting the same objections, I'm going to teach you how to handle all of those objections. Then we go into uh, prof uh, professional selling skills. Uh, sorry, professional closing skills, okay? How do you sell without selling? And how do you close without closing? right closing is ladies and gentlemen okay closing is the easiest part of the sales process if you do all the work right up front okay then uh follow-up skills follow-up strategies and techniques most of the deals are lost most of the deals are lost when you with the lack of follow-up okay in this online course i will teach you how to follow up how to do it how, uh, you know, a, a, a schedule, a sequence, what do you say, all right? Think about this, in your, in your business, how often do you follow up, okay? How often do you follow up in your business, okay? Is it one time, two times, and then you forget about it, all right? Uh, we created a 70-day a, a follow-up for property agents. For those in real estate, we created a 7-0, a 70-day follow-up structure and plan. My follow-up can be uh, as short as uh, three days to two years, depending on the size of the deal. I followed up with, with prospects for two years and closed the deal after two years. Okay. If I didn't follow up, I never would have closed those deals. Now, the online course will be ready in October. Uh, we're still in the process of, of, of uh, formatting, streamlining everything. And uh, in the past, when we've done these courses, we, we actually did a mini course uh, last year, and, and uh, it was sold for 49 uh, USD, all right? But that one, I think, had only like three or four uh, topics, so we expanded the, the topic base uh, on this online course, and it will only be 29 USD, all right? Uh, but it will be ready in October, and, and we'll announce that uh, when it's ready. Now, let me ask you this, okay? Um, if, do you have any questions uh, along the way? Uh, there's a couple things you can do. If you have a question, you can raise your hand, you know, in the chat, or you can type your question in the chat, or you have a Q&A uh, section, you can type your question there, or you can just say, uh, or you can raise your hand, and uh, if you raise your hand, what I'll do is I'll unmute you and you can ask your question live. I know, I know sometimes we have questions, you know, when, uh, when the session is over. Uh, this is what I'll do. I, uh, my number uh, and my email address should be, should be with everybody uh, because you received the, uh, you received the, uh, the notification to be here. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, you can message me uh, through Facebook. <coughs> and, you know, in some of our posts, I do put the, uh, the contact number, I do put the uh, contact information there. So you can always ask questions, um, you know, through Facebook, uh, through WhatsApp, uh, through email. All right. So uh, if there are no questions, uh, I want to thank everybody for their time. 
uh, and their attention for being here, uh, you know, on this session with us. Um, I want to wish everybody to have a safe day, a safe week, safe month, and safe year ahead. Um, and, you know, my sincerest thanks for uh, joining us on this session. And, uh, you know, take care, everybody, and uh, blessings for all of us. And I will see you on the next session. Thank you so much.